Hi, welcome to this episode of The Daily. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, in the last couple of days, my social media feed has lit up with articles and other things suggesting that it is not correct or not right to use the term Islamic violence because of the fact that whenever someone who, let's say, was born a Christian commits an act of violence like killing their wife, uh, we don't refer to that as Christian violence, so therefore we shouldn't refer to violence that is carried out by Muslims as Islamic violence. Here's why I think this proposition is fatally flawed and what's so terribly wrong with it. It's failing to make a very important distinction between these two different types of violence. You see, if a person carries out violence in the name of religion, and they believe that they are motivated by their religious doctrines and scriptures and teachings, and they are screaming out religious slogans like Allahu Akbar as they carry out those killings, then that is religious violence. If, however, someone who happens to be religious, or maybe he was just born into a religious family, carries out an act of violence, but they don't do it in the name of their religion, they don't do it motivated by their religion, let's say they kill their wife or kill their neighbor, that isn't religious violence. And in this case, the religion concerned is the religion of Islam. So it is very appropriate and very correct to call Islamic violence Islamic violence because these people are carrying out these acts of violence in the name of Islam. Rightly or wrongly, that's what they are doing. You see, if we had a group of Buddhists who are running around town claiming that the Buddhist teachings uh, were called for them to kill and subjugate other people, and as they were beheading people, they were yelling out, long live Buddha, then we would rightly call that Buddhist violence. If you had a group of Christians who were running around town claiming that the Christian scriptures and doctrines commanded them to kill and subjugate people, and as they were beheading people or blowing themselves up with suicide vests, they were screaming, Jesus saves, we would rightly call that Christian violence because there is a religious component and a religious motivating factor to this violence. So it makes absolutely no sense, therefore, to pretend that there is not a religious factor when it comes to Islamic violence because these people are carrying out this violence in the name of Islam. The funny thing is though we never really used to have a problem diagnosing these, uh, these particular problems accurately. I, I don't know why we've suddenly changed over these sorts of issues. For example, for those of us who are old enough to remember the troubles in Northern Ireland, even though that was really a power and political struggle that was going on there, people rightly diagnosed the fact that the re divisions between the two sides were drawn along religious lines, Protestants versus Catholics, orange versus green. And we rightly referred to this as things like a breakdown in Protestant-Catholic relations. We rightly talked about Protestant-Catholic violence because it was a factor. So it makes absolutely no sense now to all of a sudden pretend what is clearly a motivating factor here, the religious component, should not be named. It's actually doing a great disservice to our Muslim brothers and sisters who want reform within Islam and who want this move away from radicalism and towards a more peaceful expression as the norm within Islam. And there are Islamic scholars and activists who are fighting hard for this and those people deserve our solidarity. We do them no favors when we pretend that this isn't a problem because what we're doing is we are pretending that their struggle is nothing more than a lie or a delusion and that we shouldn't actually be supporting them in the struggle. I want to finish today's episode with two quotes from two such activists who are uh, proudly and strongly standing to defend a peaceful Islam against Islamic violence. The first is a statement from Majid Nawaz, who is the founder of the Kuliam Foundation, which is a Muslim counter-extremism think tank. And I apologize if I've pronounced the name wrong, but here's what he said. He published this after the Nice terror attacks. In the wake of the Nice attacks, people are already saying it has nothing to do with Islam. Please stop. Your good intentions towards us Muslims are only making the problem worse. This is as dangerous as saying it is everything to do with Islam. No terrorist represents the values of all Muslims, of course, but we have allowed hard-lined Islamism 
to permeate our communities and mobilize the vulnerable. So please stop denying the nature of jihadism. Please stop ignoring the narratives which drive these attacks. Instead of aiding extremists who insist Islam today is perfect, perhaps you should aid us beleaguered reformist Muslims who are attempting to address this crisis within Islam against all the odds. The second comment comes from Hamza Yusuf, and Yusuf is a Muslim academic, and on Tuesday the 5th of July he posted a blog post in the form of a Facebook note called The Plague Within. And the plague he was referring to is Islamic violence, and here's what he had to say. What we need to counter this plague are the voices of scholars as well as grassroots activists, who can begin to identify the real culprits behind this fanatical ideology. What we do not need, and that's his emphasis, not mine, what we do not need are more voices that veil the problem with empty, hollow, and vacuous arguments that this militancy has little to do with religion. It has everything to do with religion. Misguided, fanatical, ideological, and politicized religion. Unchecked, we will see this plague ferment more such violence, until one day, God forbid, these hateful and vile adherents obtain a nuclear device, the use of which has already been sanctioned by their scholars, including one currently imprisoned in Saudi Arabia. So there you have it. Those are the voices from within Islam who are fighting for reform, and they are saying to us loudly and clearly, we need to stop denying that there is a religious component to this violence, because we don't do them or ourselves any favors when we pretend that Islamic violence is not actually a real thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow on the daily.